Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and part two of our How to Play Kill Team series. I'm Lee and in this video I'll be taking you through the data cards. In part one we went through the introduction to Kill Team and the tools of war you need to get player. But now in this video, which is part two of the series, we'll be taking a close look at the data cards and we'll use the Commando Dacaboy data card as our example. Each operative in your kill team has its own set of individual rules known as a data card. It states all the key characteristics of your operatives and the weapons they are equipped with and details anything unique they can do. At the moment you can't buy the data cards separately and you won't find any apart from the example ones in the core rulebook. So if you want to find any data cards then you have to buy the compendium book or the Octaria Supplement Book. Okay, let's get started going through everything you need to know about the data cards. And we're going to use this Commando Dacaboy data card as our example, and this is taken from the Octarius Supplement Book. So here you see at the top left, we've got the operative type. So this will give you the name of the operative and a very brief introduction just to let you know what they're all about. To the right of that, we've got our physical profile. And here we've got different characteristics. The first one is M, which represents movement. And this is the speed at which the operative moves across the kill zone represented by a distance value. And this distance value is three white circles. So that's a total of six inches. Then we have the operative's APL, and this stands for action point limit. And this is the number of action points an operative generates when it is activated, and these are used to perform actions. Then we've got GA, and this represents group activation. Most operatives are activated individually, but some operatives must be activated in a group, and this number states how many of these operatives are activated together. In the next line down, we have DF, and this stands for defense, and this tells us how many attacks the operative can defend each time another operative attacks it with a ranged weapon. Then we have SV, and this stands for save. And this is how likely the operative is to avert an attack each time another operative attacks it with a ranged weapon represented by the result required when rolling a D6. And note that a lower result is a better characteristic. Then the final characteristic in this physical profile is W, which stands for wounds. And this simply tells us how many wounds an operative can lose before it is incapacitated. Next, we've got the weapons. And first of all, we'll have the ranged weapon profiles. So this little icon here tells us that it's a ranged weapon. And these ranged weapons are the ones that the operative can be equipped with and those individual characteristics and rules that apply to that weapon when shooting. We're gonna go over shooting in a completely separate video, but it's important to note that as well as the core rules, each weapon will have its own rules and you'll find those on the data cards. So we start off here with the name and this is a DACA shooter. Then we have A, which stands for attacks. And this is the number of attack dice to roll when the operative attacks with this weapon. Then we've got BS, which stands for ballistic skill. And this tells us how accurate the operative is when attacking with this weapon represented by the result required when rolling a d6 and note that a lower result is a better characteristic. We'll cover WS in a second when we move on to melee weapons. So then we've got D and this stands for damage and this is the amount of damage each attack dice can inflict and the first value is the normal damage characteristic and the second value is the critical damage characteristic. Now we move across to SR, and this stands for special rules, and any special rules that apply each time the operative attacks with this weapon. Common special rules we'll go through later on in future videos, but special rules marked with this asterisk here are explained on the operative's data card. We'll take a look at this explanation in a second, but let's first have a look at what this exclamation mark means. And this stands for critical hit rules and any additional effects the weapon can cause with critical hits. And this one doesn't have any. 
Now let's look at the melee weapon profiles. And so here you'll see this symbol here with the two blades crossed over. So that lets us know it's a melee weapon. And our commando Dacker boy is going to be using his fists. So again, we've got A for attacks. This time we look at the WS, which is the weapon skill. This tells us how accurate and skilled the operative is when attacking with this weapon, represented by the result required when rolling a D6. And again, note that the lower result is a better characteristic. Then we have the damage, the special rules, and the critical hit rules, just like we saw with the ranged weapon here. Now let's take a look at the abilities. And these abilities are for any unique rules that the operative has. And this could be for a specific weapon or just for that type of operative. So here you can see we've got the unload slugs ability. And this is tied in with the DACA shooter range weapon. And it tells us that each time this operative makes a shooting attack with this weapon, in the roll attack dice step of that shooting attack, if the target is within one red pentagon, which is six inches of it, you can re-roll any or all of your attack dice. Some abilities will only affect operatives with the relevant keywords, and we'll take a look at those in a second. And then there's just one other thing to note about abilities, and that is that an operative gains no benefit from the same ability from two different operatives, and that ability only applies once. Next, we've got unique actions, and any unique actions the operative can perform in addition to the universal actions available to all operatives will be detailed here. And you can see that our commander, Daka Boy, has got a Daka Dash at a cost of one AP, and with this Daka Dash, he can perform a free shoot action and a free dash action in any order. Now we're getting right to the bottom of the data card and we can see that we've got our keywords here and a set of keywords help to identify the operative. Some rules will only affect operatives with the relevant keyword identified by the keyword in bold font that you can see here. If a rule has the orc keyword, then this particular operative can use that rule. If it's got orc and daca boy, then only a operative with both orc and daca boy keywords can use it. Some keywords are written in orange and they have this skull symbol that we can see here. And this denotes a faction keyword, which is used for creating a roster. And we're gonna cover rosters in a future video. There's a couple of other things to note about keywords. And one of them is that pluralization of a keyword does not affect which operative the rule applies to. You'll also notice that some operatives will have selectable keywords in angular brackets, such as the clan here. This denotes a keyword that you must choose for yourself when the operative is added to your roster. Your choice replaces all instances of the angular bracket keyword on that operative's data card. So if we add blood axes on our roster, then we replace clan with blood axes anywhere clan in the angular brackets would appear. We've also got four symbols at the bottom right hand of our data card, and these represent our specialisms for our operative. We're going to cover these a lot in the narrative section of this series. So we're going to go into more detail about these then, and until then, you don't need to use these. So that covers our data cards, but there are just two other things that we should talk about at this point, And one of those is the engagement range. Engagement range is the zone of threat that operatives present to their enemies. And many rules in the game use engagement range, such as when moving and fighting. Engagement range is mutual, therefore operatives are within each other's engagement range if one of them is visible to and within one black triangle of the other. We've also got to look at modifying characteristics, and some rules will modify the characteristics of an operative and or their weapons. And all modifiers to a characteristic are cumulative. If a characteristic refers to the result required when rolling a d6, for example, a save, ballistic skill or weapon skill, then the modifier will specify to improve or worsen the characteristic. As a lower result is a better characteristic, the modifier should be applied accordingly. For example, if a ballistic skill of four plus is worsened by one, it would be modified to a five plus. If an operative's APL or action point limit is modified, it lasts until the end of its current or next activation, whichever comes first. 
regardless of how many APL modifiers an operative is affected by, the total modification can never be more than minus one or plus one from its normal APL. For example, if an operative has an APL of two and two rules say to add one to the operative's APL until the end of its next activation, it would only have an APL of three. That's covered all the rules you need to know for the data cards. So now come and join me for part three of this How to Play Kill Team series where we'll look at the battle structure, which includes the initiative phase, the strategy phase, and the firefight phase. You can find loads of other videos on my channel for Kill Team and other games, and these videos include painting, deep dives, how to play, and many other topics. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, and if you've got any questions, please add them in the comments section below. It'd be great to hear from you, and if I can help you out in any way, that would be awesome too. But thanks so much for watching. Can't wait to see you in the next episode of the series. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.